Hello everyone, welcome back to the Silver Screen Dudes on our YouTube channel. My name is Nico Luro and once again, I'm very, very happy to be welcoming on a member of the film creation world. You know, I'm very much on the back end of things, as low down as it gets, and I've been humbled and blessed recently to have some really really impressive film creatives on the channel and i'm happy to welcome another one on today i did the review for berman's details recently really enjoyed it the review is on the channel now i'll link it down below so you can go check it out but i'm joined today by the director and star of berman's details michael head michael thank you for joining me no thank you for having us on mate it's an absolute pleasure i wanted to start off actually just by because i think this is actually a really fun story so Normally, when I get um, people like yourself, you know, directors, writers, actors on the channel, it's usually off the back end of having reviewed a movie and either the PR or publicist will reach out to me going, hey, there's a review or uh, an interview opportunity. Do you want it? And I'll usually say yes. But this happens so much more organically than that, you and me reaching out, which I <laughs> loved. Um, I literally put the review up and one of the top comments, I think I've pinned it on the review, was you just saying, as the director of the movie, I was like, oh, wow, okay, color, color me surprised. Because what I loved about that is it gave me, like, it, in a way, nice hope that what I'm doing is working. The fact that my review is reaching the director was like, wow, really cool. Yeah. Like, your comment was lovely. Well, no, I mean, so I'm, uh, whenever a review comes through, I do read them. And if they're rubbish, I say, oh, I don't read the reviews. Of course we do. We always read the reviews. Um, and what I loved about your one, obviously it was positive, which which I love, mm. but sometimes they're not. Um, but I just thought it was insightful. And you clearly know film. You're clearly passionate. And you know what you're saying. Sometimes you read a review, and if it's overly positive, you take it with a pinch of salt, like, oh, yeah, thanks, mm. Mum. Thanks for writing that. Although my mum hated my work. <laughs> um, and, then, um, and then sometimes you read something, and it's so negative. You're like, well, that's, that, that, you know, it, it, it can't. If it was that, if it was half as bad as you say, it wouldn't have been made. Um, right. But I loved what you said. It was kind of everything that I was trying and hoping to achieve. Um, but in an insightful, it was thoughtful way. So it was um, a guy called Gavin Sanchez sent it to me. Uh, I think it was a Friday or Saturday night. I was in my cousin's back garden, adding a few drinks. And he, mm. Mike, you, you've got to have a listen to this. So I went outside and watched it and it just made me smile. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's what you hope for. When I created right. this, I don't want to change the world. I don't want to make a political view. I just want to bring a bit of joy and, and a bit of, in, you know, hopefully something that people go, yeah, I, I enjoyed that and I can see what he was trying to do. And that was yeah. what you said. And it meant the world to me. It really, really did. So, yeah, straight away, I was on YouTube. Hello, this is the director. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and, yeah, no, it does. It means the world to us. And any director or writer that says different, they're lying. That's the truth of it. As much as nice you know, I've, had, I've had a couple of Skaven reviews, and as much as I know it don't, but yeah, of course it does. You know, it's, and so it must. That, be. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and from there we kind of we you know we linked up on Instagram, and then you kind of sent me like five or six really lovely voice notes, and I was like, well, hey man, look, we're clearly getting along. Let's let's have a chat. Let's let's see where this goes, and here we are. Um, one thing I said in the review, which is what I'm going to ask you to build on now, is much like myself, you're clearly a fan of the British gangster film. You're clearly a fan of the Guy Ritchie's and Matthew Vaughan's, and I can see some Tarantino in there for sure. So what were some inspirations and influences for you when making Berman Sea Tales? Like, I do see a lot of Guy Ritchie, and I mean that in a good way. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I will never beat these greats. But hopefully I can lovingly rip off <laughs> and sort of make, a, a, you know, a, my, a Michael Head homage to. Um, mm. And my influences are quite broad. I mean, obviously Tarantino is my favourite. You know, Reservoir mm. Dogs is just the perfect movie, in my opinion. Um, my other favourite would be In Bruges. You know, I just think again, oh, Bruges is, is perfection. Yeah. Uh, the most underrated movie, because even people that like it, very few put it in their top five. I'm like, no, it's, it's just brilliant. My, my wife doesn't get it, and I love my wife to pieces, but she's wrong. Um, 
The Scorsese is fantastic. <laughs> Um, sure. Someone needs to tell him that his last three films are an hour too long, but I ain't going to be the one to Thank do it. Thank you. And they, it just, I get it. You're brilliant, Dude. but I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in here like, you know, I've had me popcorn. I need a wee. The football's on. Yeah. Do me a um, although he probably argue that he's more successful for me than so, you know, maybe he knows better. <laughs> um, and then you know, you, you, you Guy Richie's, um, Ray Bird, this who've done Love on the Bay. Mm. Um, who I actually did, I, I co-wrote a film with. Um, but then I've also got a lot of, I grew up, my, my favourite film at the age of five or six was A Fish Called Wanda. Um, Great film with John Cleese, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah John Cleese, Kelvin, uh, uh, Kevin Klein, um, yeah. anything that was Monty Python as a kid. At, at the age yeah. of three, I think my favourite programme was The Young Ones. Um, I, and I had the, the pleasure of meeting um, Rick Mao, uh, which was for me was an uh, was an absolute highlight of my life. Mm. Um, and then I, I like sort of slightly obscure things, uh, Flight of the Concords. I just think is superb, and, and it's it's one it's I haven't stuff. seen yet. Oh, you've got to watch it. It's a TV. I, I don't know if it was a film. But it was definitely a TV series. Mm. Um, and it's the third biggest folk duo in. I'm, I'm now plugging the program name mine um, in uh, New Zealand. And they'll be Very on a date cool. or something, and then they just burst into a song. Um, and it's, it's just brilliant. Um, and I've always sort of, anything that I like, I'll sort of see it and go, I'll have a crack at that. And I don't think I can, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I can do it better, but if you no. can bring it to an audience or if you can bring a slightly different light on it, or even if people go, oh, you know, close but no cigar, mm. I'll take that. And, and that was kind of what permanency towels was but based on my family so we'll, we'll come to that um it, it's funny you mentioned family but i, I just want to tap into this the, your inspirations in a bit more so as a massive guy ritchie fan it must have been a blast getting some of the actors who have appeared in these movies you know like alan ford vaz blackwood what was your pitch to them when telling them about your movie um, so, yeah, it's, obviously my whole career, I, I, I'm a theatre writer. I've been writing plays yeah. for 15 years. And over the 15 years, I've been lucky that I've sort of built up a respect that I can work with people that are of a standard. Um, Frank Harper, who obviously is, um, the, you know, the, the, the guy from Lockstock. I did, I've did. i known Frank for years on and off. And um, I did a film called The Last Ice, which was... It was based on my West End play. I liked it. It didn't, you know, it was a low budget film. I think it did well for what it was. And The Guardian went, we hate it, but Michael's like a young Frank Harper. Yeah. Um, so I kept tagging him on Facebook with, I'm, I'm the new you, mate. I'm the new you. And he sent me a message, went, will you stop tagging me in this film? I'm not in. And I went, I'll do it if you play my dad. So that was how we got Frank. And Frank, now we're actually, we've set up a company together. We're doing a couple of films together. Um the uh Vaz Blackwood, I've done a few yeah. films. It's my third film with Vaz, so I know Vaz. So again, that was a phone call. Mate, do us a favor, will you be in my film? And then cool. everyone in Vermersy Towels is a friend of mine. So John Hanna, um, obviously Dan O'Reilly, who's known as Dapper Laughs, uh, Charlie yeah. Clapham, uh, David Shaw, they're all my very, very close friends. So I've got them on board. Mm. And then the only two parts that we hadn't cast was Maisie Smith's role and Alan Ford. And mm. I said to the producer, I'm, look, I'm, they're, they're the guys that I want. We won't get them because mm. I don't know them. We won't get them. And then when I put it out on on, on the spotlight, they come through. So to get Alan Ford and Maisie was unreal because um, I, I didn't think we'd get them. John, I knew yeah. John would do it as a, as a favour to me. And I know he, he, he likes to write and we work well together. So, but to get Alan Ford was unreal. And I'm like, that's brick top. Then that's, that's you know it, there so you go like <laughs> um, and my entire career is basically me saying right what can i do and who can i work with that i love um mm. and you know there's people that i haven't worked with yet and if you're watching john cleese i'm out there for you you know but there are there's certain people you just think i'd love to work with these and what what an honor to grow up watching these people love these people i mean um yeah. David Shaw was Jay's dad from In Between Us. I love that. And then next week, Mate, I'm there, I'm like, that's it's Jay's dad. so funny you say that. I uh, literally, <laughs> yeah. like, that's Jay's dad. That's Jay's yeah. dad. How is he going to wrangle that? Go on, mate. Um, and again, it was uh, uh, David was in my West End play that become the last mm. heist. And then 
uh, that didn't work out for me because I was, you know, I, I weren't producing the film, so I, I had no say in the casting. I mean, and the guy that took it was Terry Stone, who was very good. And then I said to him, Look, when I do a film that I have a bit of a say, you know, David, I think you're brilliant. I, you know, I, I mm. want to work with you again. And then he, the last two films that I've done, he's in both of them. Um, and it's just weird because I'll get a text message or a phone call. Or I've literally just left, you know, just left the pub with these guys. And I'm like, as much as I know them now and they're friends, I'm still like, mm. I'm out with Jay's dad. I'm having a beer with Jay's dad. It's it just, it, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you ever get over that. You know, um, and, and and especially with football, I, I'm a Leeds fan, and David is uh, he's West Ham, and I gave him a load of ribbon about Calvin Phillips, and I'm like, I'm sharing a football joke with Jay's dad, and yeah, I, I just think it's what what uh, it's such an honour and a blessing to uh, to th th that's my life, you know, and it is, and it, yeah. I don't think you ever get over it, and I hope I never get over it. I hope that I always have that element of that's cool, you know. Keep that. Never, ever lose that. I mean, who am I to advise you on what to do? Obviously, you're far more successful than I am in this field. But it's, it's such a beautiful sentiment you've just shared. And yeah, always keep that fanboyism. You know, it's it, it's wonderful to hear that even at your level, it's still like, oh, Christ, that's bricked up. That's awesome. It's yeah, and, and, awesome. and, and, yeah, and I still laugh. I mean, I mean Frank's one of my best mates. I, I speak to him three, mm. four times a day. And I always have Frank Harper. Like, he's still, you know, me, me and my wife still joke about it. And I think sometimes I think film losers, uh, filmmakers lose that. And yeah. I think that's when the when the uh, the spark goes, you know. And I, yeah. I love Guy Ritchie, but I do think some of his pro, like some of it, the stuff that he's done, The Gentleman, which I thought was very good, I thought mm -hmm. was excellent. But some, you yeah. think, you has the spark gone slightly? Um, and, I, yeah, I just I always think that's a shame because it should never be a job. It should mm. never be, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been really lucky. I've never done film for years. For 15 years I've tried to get into it and I've made five films in, in three years. So I'm, I'm very blessed. Yeah. Um, but I hope that when I'm making 25 films, I'm still talking to people like yourself. I'm still very grateful for that interaction. And I hope I'm still a fanboy that's making films rather than, oh, well, now this is technically what I'm trying to do. And, you know, I just don't, I just don't think that's what it's about. And I think the audience get that. I think they I, do. I, well, they I do. They and do. 100%. Well, they, of course they do. I mean, it, it showed in your, in your, in your work that, you know, it, the, the, I think audiences are smart. There's a very, very clear distinction between someone being inspired by versus someone ripping off. And it was it when someone is inspired by and wants to kind of put their own spin on something which they love, that's contagious. And that's why I got one of the reasons I got such a kick out of Bermondsey Tales, you know, like that that scene where you've got them all in, in, in a drug laden mess in that pub. <laughs> I was like, well, he clearly likes the Wolf of Wall Street. And he clearly. Yeah. yeah, he clearly. I've never seen it. I don't Wall know Street. what you're on about. <laughs> Never seen it. No, not at all. Um, yeah, and, and it is. I mean, that, so that's a true story. Everything in Bermondsey yeah. Towers is true, apart from obviously the running around with the guns. That we, we don't do that. Um, mm. But everything in Bermondsey is unbelievably true. Um, but then the, the, it was we was in Holland. We was doing well. My granddad was doing a deal, so it had to be. We had to be respectable, and they all got mashed on Salvia. And then when I watched The Wolf of Wall Street, I went, that's absolutely genius. And you think, yeah. well, I've, I've lived that life. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen what one of the best ever has done with it. Mm. Mm. I'll give that a go. Um, yeah. And then to get David Shaw acting it out, which is still, that's my <laughs> wife's favourite part of that film. She loves David. And the bit where he starts dancing, it, I, I don't know how bad news would have to be that she wouldn't laugh at that clip. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it, it, why, uh, babe? I'm leaving you. I've met someone else. You play the clip, you laugh. You know, it's, 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 um, so yeah, I just, just think the whole it's, way uh, it unfolded too with that, you know, the way he got taken down that dark alley and didn't have his wits about him. And ah, oh, I, I was on the train watching that, literally heading into, I think I was heading into BFI for something, and I was creasing with laughter you know when you're sort of laughing in a public place and you're just trying to contain it so you don't bother everyone else and it was like 
And that in turn makes it funnier. That scene is going to stay with me for a long time. It was fantastic. Oh, mate, I, I, and you know, that's the point. And it, that's what, uh, it, when someone says that, what a wonderful thing. And, I, and I've had moments in film that I watch and I think I love that, whether it's a line, sometimes it can be just a look. Um, but if it's something yeah. sticks with you, and then yeah. to think that I've created something that's going to stick with someone else, I, I don't think there's anything you can do that's greater. Uh, you know, there's so much, um, you know, I don't want to get political, but there's so much uh, anger in the world. There's so much misery in the world. There's so much bad things that happen to people. If you create, if you can create a moment of joy, then yeah. I just think that's that's lovely to hear. And it, things like that mean the world. And, and um Good. And yeah, and and, it, and and we had a laugh doing it. And the the truth is, that when I heard that, well, I was part of that story. And the guy that told Pretty Boy, we used to call him, and he was ridiculous. He went, I, "What I don't get is why she come up to me, you know, because I can handle myself. I'm a good looking fella." And I just remember me and Granddad going, "Because she was dribbling, and you was you, 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 he was in a Dutch calf on his own, like just rocking." And you think that's why? And it, just, I just found it funny. Um, yeah. and I thought that, that, I know it sounds a little bit arrogant, but like other people need to hear this. I've been telling that mm -hmm. story in a pub for years. Well, put it in a film, and yeah, I just think yeah. like, it's something that I, I just think it's a nice thing to be able to be in a position to do and to let them stories live on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, like I said, it really, really does mean the world. Good. And I, I meant I meant it, and I'm I'm happy that it's it, it's nice to hear what went into it. I'm happy that you know it's it's other people are appreciating the story too. Um, and th listen, this next question you've you've answered it a lot already, but just to tap into it. Um, so a lot of time, creatives like yourself talk about how real people influence their work. So the inspirations for you here were your family. So talk to me about that. <sighs> Yeah, so my, my granddad was, I, I like to say, an alternative businessman. He, as a young man, and this is he's mentioned in one of my other films, all of my writing comes from, from true stories, whether it's The Greater Game, which is about footballers in World War One, to Bermondsey and The Last Ice, which is closer to home. Um, he was a straight man, and he got nicked for a job that he didn't do. And that, that's, that's the God's honest truth. And then when he came out, he was like, well, I've lost everything. I might as well join them. And, uh, but although he was a villain or whatever you want to, a gangster, whatever you want to call it, I grew up around these people. Um, mm. and they weren't violent. They weren't horrible. They weren't nasty. And you see a lot of gangster films, which are no disrespect to them. They, they do what they do. And I, and I, I like watching them, but they get it so wrong. And they idolize mm. the craze. And you think the craze was 2% of that world. The other 98% are the people that make the business happen, make things happen. There, there's loyalty. You have to be loyal. There's no contract, yeah. so you're only as good as your word. Uh, there's yeah. no violence. Why are you going to, you know, Football Factory, great film, But and I said this to Frank, why is someone going to – I was once in a pub, and these people come in, they smashed each other up, Millwall fans over a West Ham game. And my granddad mm. came over and went, who's your folk? Get out. He went, I've got something by my feet that if I get nicked, he went, I'm going to get 16 years for this. He went, and you two are walking in because you clumped a guy for supporting another team. He went, it's mental. There was never, you never hurt a civilian. You never, the Sopranos actually is spot on because it mm. brings that, I'm not saying my family were mafia, not by any means, but there's that element of how the real life is. And mm. the most important thing is it's full of laughter. If, you know, if you're inside yeah. for for eight years, yeah, you might be a decent fighter, but there's going to be someone that can handle you. And if not, so there'll be three people that can handle you. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. do you know what? The best way to get on is to make people laugh. And I always sat around the pub from the age of 14, hearing these stories, meeting these people, chatting with these people. They were friends. They were family. And the yeah. one thing that always shone through was humour characters mm. and humor and even the violent stories which weren't you know the, the story with as blackwood in the pub with the uh with, with the syrup true story yeah, yeah. i was there right. when it happened but it was and it, oh right it was a violent story but it weren't it was comedy and mm. 
I think the humour is what I wanted to shine through. And if my granddaddy, he's passed away now, but if my granddad could watch this and it was loud, me and go, oh, you know, oh, smash him up, he'd be ashamed. Where hopefully mm. he'd watch that, he'd laugh and go, yeah, that no, was funny. And that was when people say, oh, why have you made a gangster film? Hopefully to make people laugh, you know? Yeah. So again, that, the humour and, and the characters and the family, the, the love, the respect is hopefully stuff that comes through, even though they're bad people, they're good people doing bad things. Is mm -hmm. But without trying to glamorise it or romanticise it, because I, I wouldn't want to, even though if I thought that, I'd do it myself. I don't. I'm not a, I'm mm. not a villain. I make films. Um, yeah. So I don't necessarily agree with that world, but I, I just think they're often misportrayed. Yeah, fair enough. Well said. Really well said. Um, well, listen, so circling back to something you said about Guy Ritchie earlier, you, you've given me a beautiful tangent here because you, you referred to him and Quentin as like, you know, greats who, who you won't come close to, That your words. Um, but so I actually hope you take this next statement as a massive compliment. One of Guy Ritchie's major shortcomings for me i've always thought is the way he writes female characters tarantino not so much you know he's all about you know really cool female characters like you wrote or any the bride you know he he does good female characters for most part guy Ritchie's always left me wanting a bit um and we can we can go through that in detail if needed but for guy for me for guy Ritchie, his female characters are just kind of there they're part of the tapestry, but they're not the main centerpiece. I get the impression, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I get the impression you played on that a lot and you deceived me into thinking that this was the same thing in Bermondsey Tales and without giving it away for those who haven't seen it, but then you did that twist ending on me with the ladies and completely empowered them in the movie. So what, what was the thought process between uh, behind writing the female characters here? And yes, I do think you write female characters better than Guy Ritchie. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll take that. No, so I am a theatre writer. Um, I'm not, I, I don't study film. I've never studied mm -hmm. film. I'm not a director. I don't want to be a director. It happened because of circumstance. So my background is theatre. And if you're writing theatre, the difference is film is often working class and it's often men that buy the film. Theatre is often middle class, upper class, and it's often women that buy the theatre tickets. So if you're going to write a theatre play, women have to be important. They have to be, mm. they can't be tokenism. Um, and that's where that sort of come from. And I've always, I, I've got a play that's called The Greater Game. It's about footballers in World War One. It's about men all day long. But I made sure that there's three female characters that carry the story because it's about what happens back home. Mm. Um, and I said, I mean, I, we can't just write it about the men. It can't just be men go to war and men die. It's got to be, but what happens to the women back home about that? What about the mothers that are raising kids that haven't got fathers? What about the women that lose their wives and what could have been? What about the women that are keeping a country ticking over? Um, and that was one of my early projects. And I realised the importance of the female role. And also with yeah. my family. I mean, my um, my nan was a very powerful character over my granddad. Um, and my mum would have been the biggest gangster in the world had she been a man. Um, mm. So I was raised by these dominant women. Um, and I just find them quite interesting. And... Mm. You, you know, the, the sort of without trying to give too much away with Bermondsey, uh, it's the women that often lead the way. You know, and, and I'm a big fan of the Roman Empire, as you can probably tell. And it was often the female characters, you know, for, for, for every Augustus, there was Olivia, which is the name of my mm. daughter. And then that was brought up in um, The Sopranos with Livia, you know, uh, mm. Anthony's dad. Um, and obviously, depending on history, is Livia a bad woman or a good woman? Depends on what books you read. Um, but I've just always found that interesting. And, yeah, I, I just – and there's so much female talent out there. One of the, the projects we're doing at the minute with Frank Harper is um, 12 Ang Angry Men. But we're making it yeah, – we're, we're not calling it 12 Angry Women because we'll get slaughtered, um, and rightly yeah. so. But we're calling it the 12, and the jury are all women. Um mm. And I've found it fascinating to write. And what a beautiful thing to cast, because there's so, much, so many talented women out there 
because eighty percent of women that are training are eighty uh, uh, percent of people that train are women, and yep. that probably equates to what twenty five percent of jobs in the industry. So yeah, yeah you can that. always cast yeah you know and look at the women that we had Alexander Kay, Linda Robson, Vicky Michelle, Maisie Smith, who is just a, a force to be reckoned with. Um, so you can always find them amazing women out there. So yeah, it's just been something that I've always. Partly because of my upbringing, and also partly as a as a writer, I just think women are sometimes underused, and I, I just find that a little bit tragic. And then the same with some characters, some male characters. If it's tokenism, there's no point. You've got yeah. if they don't need to be there, cut them out. You know, if if, if you yeah. can live without it, you know, what, why have five chairs around your table if there's only four of you? And that's something that I sort of thought from a young age as a writer, anyway. Yeah, that being there for the sake of being there. This goes back to what I was saying about the Guy Ritchie stuff. You know, they kind of, look at. Um, I don't even think she's got a name, but you know, the 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 the, the dealer's um, lady friend in Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. She's got the great scene with the Bren gun, but I don't think she says a damn word for the whole movie. She's just there, even in the Gentleman. You know, McConaughey's wife, great character, but yeah, such a yeah. small character. And, 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 and the other one's like Lacey and this, who's like so unassuming for most part, and you think, oh, okay, bit of hot totty here, who's getting mistreated by the El General playboy, and then that twist happens. It's like, wow, yeah. and I did well, not see it coming. You really blindsided I, me with that. I, I like that. I've, that's, I mean, I, I've got another film out called The Last Heist, and there's a twist in that that no, it was a West End play first called Time, and I, I think that the film loses its way ever so slightly. Although obviously, I'm very proud of it. Um, but I like for people not to see what's coming. I like for, mm. I think that's part of the enjoyment. Um, and, and yeah, just getting back to, I mean, the other one's layer cake. If, if I said to you right now, right, I'm going to make a film. I'm going to get Sienna Miller in it. Cause she's unbelievably yeah. hot. She's going to yeah. meet a guy who's got a, she's got a boyfriend, but she's going to meet this guy within three minutes. She's going to try and get hold of him. Then she's going to turn up at his house or hotel, take her clothes off. And then he disappears. You stay in it. People ain't making that film no more. And I'm not, Layer Cake is unbelievable. But people ain't making that film no more. And I think that's good. It's good that people are questioning it. It's good that we've evolved. You know, I've yeah. watched Layer Cake. I love Layer Cake. And hopefully the females in my characters, uh, the females in my films and the characters have, have evolved from that. That's big. Time. That's all we can do. But, but and this just to really drive the point home, this is what I love so much about your female characters is because by design or not, you really gave the impression to start with that this was your atypical female casting in a British gangster flick, you know, background noise. And what what I loved about your twist is that even in, you know, the great twists, you know, things like The Usual Suspects, maybe, when you go back and watch them, you can always find the pieces and the hints there. What I thought was so brilliant about yours is you didn't really leave a bread trail for me to find. But it still made complete sense when the twist happened. And I was like, that's that's astute. That was really on point. No, thank you. Yeah, no, again, things like it, it's lovely to hear because that was that was what I was hoping people would take from it. Mm. But what was the most challenging part of this production and how did you overcome it? I'm blagging it the whole lot. The whole lot was just <laughs> chief, yeah, just chief blag. So we it was a very low budget film, as you said in your review, and a lot of people said that. You know, I mean, Snatch was a ten million pound film twenty twenty odd years ago. This yeah. was done for a couple of hundred thousand in this day and age. You know, and I, I said to a friend of mine, "Went, oh, Snatch, I went, yeah, but t you know, back when Snatch was made, if you had ten million pounds to buy a house, you'd have bought a mansion, you'd have bought a street." Yeah. I went in this day and age. I went, if you had three hundred thousand to make a film. I mean, you don't even buy my flat, and I live in a two-bedroom flat in, in Sitka. I mean, you've got to keep that in mind. So the, the money was always um, – was was always – it's going to be hard. You know, even some mm. of the fight scenes. You know, I, I remember I, my DOP was brilliant. I gave him Kingsman as a reference. And he went, yeah, he went, if I've got – you know, if I've got 400 cameras and men that are stunt, you know, martial artists, he said, they're ninjas. 
he went, you've given me two guys, one of them can fight, the other one can't. He went, you give me 45 minutes on one camera. Like, What's your yeah. problem? So, you know, they're, they're, they're always the issues. <laughs> um, and then just, I mean, I wasn't going to direct this. Um, we had a director and a DOP that pulled out three weeks before filming. Um, and I was actually wow. in Turkey on holiday. I was going to co-direct it with him. And then, you know, so I wasn't going to play Henry originally. I was going to play Frank Harper's role. Then mm. the, this, uh, Ray Bird is coming. No, I'll co-direct it with you. And you play Henry. I'm, yeah, well, I'll do that. And then sadly, he dropped out three weeks before filming. Um, I'm in Turkey on holiday going, well, I don't need to be there. Ray's got everything. Then we lost our DOP. So I only had 10 days with the DOP, who I found literally on a Zoom call. He was highly recommended and, and we got on well and, you know, it was, you know, we worked out for the best. Um, so that was always hard. And then directing a the film, I've never worked in film. I've never, never directed a short film. I've never directed an advert, never directed, i am never, you know, it's just something that I've never, ever done. Um, and I literally watched Studio Binder to, to find out yeah. what I had to do. And so that was, that was hard, but, I had a good team. The actors were all brilliant. I mean, how do you direct John Hanna and Frank Harper and Alan Ford and these people? You know, David Shaw and Charlie. How do you say to Dapper Laughs, can you be funny, mate? He just naturally is. So that was all yeah. easy. Um, the My first Andrew Richards is unreal. My DOP, um, Seb, is unreal. So that they looked, up, they looked after my lack of knowledge. Um, mm. Yeah, it was hard. It was, you know, you're always going to have problems you're always going to want more experience you're always going to look back and change things like with the edit which is something you picked up on we had mm. we had no money for the edit we had you know yeah. there was a guy that went i want x amount of money and i want six weeks and we went well, we've got x amount of money you've got a week and a half it, it just I, I i don't make you wrong but with, with what you said yeah. um but you know there's always challenges but at the same time i've spent many a year not making films i've spent many a year doing theater thinking oh, hopefully one day so as much mm. as it, it it could be i was working 17 hour days because we didn't have the money i had to travel up by train and back you know but it was a pleasure what a pleasure to be able to do it yeah and um you know i think that's for every challenge you've got to try and find the positive and um and, and just be grateful and just be humble that there's there's a lot of people out there Lot of lot of script writers, lot of directors, a lot of people far more talented than me. But I've been blessed to make this film, so you know, grab it with both hands and, and enjoy it. And if I make another mm. one, brilliant. If I don't, I've had me five minutes in the sun. Well, that that's the last question I want to ask you tonight, then, Michael. It's um, what what's your next project? What can we look forward to? Because you know, you've given you've dangled the carrot now. You've given me a taste of vermin detail. Mm. I want to see more. What what's the next thing? <laughs> So we've we've got a couple. We're um we're working with a number of students. Me and Frank Harper um are working with a number of students that we we they've not been the female students not been treated not say unfairly but they they've not had a, a a great um you know roll of the dice so to speak, and we wanted to give them a platform. So we're doing a rewrite of Twelve Angry Men as Twelve Angry Women. Um, it's going back to my roots, which is obviously stage plays being adapted to film. Frank's going to direct them. I've written them. So we've got that, and we're doing it as a double bill with um, uh, something that's heavily inspired by the Dumbwaiter, which obviously Harold Pinter is another hero of mine. Um, I think one of my early theatre reviews, and a few times it's happened since I've been referred to as Pinter-esque or like Pinter or, you know, a modern-day Pinter, which is as high as any praise could ever be. Um, so Frank, we look. We do the dumb waiter, and we won't get the rights. You know, you rewrite it. So we're doing. It's called Meet Across the River, and we're doing the twelve. So they're two stage plays which are being adapted to film. They are low budget, um, but the cast is very good. So we've got that coming up, and then we, we, Frank's got a film called Beyond Good and Evil, which is is it obviously he did um, St George's Day. So it's it's a long nail. Um, but it's brilliant. It's the old school meets the new school. You know, you've got these these old school gangsters that I would uh, associate with or, or, or feel familiar with. And then you've got this younger generation of, of cross county lines, postcode stabbings that I don't understand. I mean, it's, it's part of the world and I understand it, but I don't I don't know it. So you've got the meet of the old and the new. And then my other, my next actual project that I'm going to write and direct is um, called Worth a Flutter. And it was a stage play. 
it's um it's about male tusculinity it's about how it, you think it's about my character and again it's about but with what you said about strong women it's actually it's about the lady that i meet and you realize that she's met two men but you don't you don't know that till halfway through um and it's it's a romantic comedy it's set in bermondsey it's very much like bermondsey tales but there's no hint of gangster it's got that element of crazy stuff happens and it comes out of nowhere which i hope is yeah. i hope that that sort of becomes a bit of a calling card that there's these moments of real grittiness and then there's there's this horse race which is first people you meet on the first day and the worst ones mm. you can meet all represented by these horses um and you know two men that are, are fighting over a woman but it's done in a boxing bitch off um so yeah that's that's my next one worth a flutter and yeah hopefully we can get them off the ground um you know you, 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 until they're there you never know but the the meet across the river we're filming late august and the 12th we're starting in september and i'm just excited to be doing two stage plays that i love but being able to have carte blanche to to, to rewrite them and, and, and make them my own well listen shameless plug here if there's an opportunity for me to come in and see them early and get a review out for you you know i'd be more than happy to do that yeah, no, listen, 100%. Mate. And, and also come down on set. I, I, obviously, I'm assuming from the uh, the dirty signpost you've got behind you that you're, you're London-based. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I was London-based until a year ago. Oh, okay. A year, okay. A, a year ago, I moved down to the South Coast because I've got uh, literally in the last three years, I've made two kids and I was like, I need a bigger place, man. I can't do London anymore. But yeah, no, listen, I'd, I'd, I'd love to come on the set and see what you guys are doing. If, if that, if there's an opportunity to do yeah, that, of course, yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent, come down and, and, and we'll show you. It. And then you get a, a sense of not sometimes when you see a film, it's, oh, that's the end product, but it's, why are we making these films? What are we yeah, trying yeah. to do? What are we trying? And that's what I thought you caught perfectly with a review. Um, and sometimes I've, a, a, a theatre director of mine always said, sometimes with theatre reviewers, you show them a horse, but they think they're going to see a cow. And they then review that horse as to why it's a bad cow. And you're like, but it's not It's not a cow, it's a horse. Yeah. And, and right. I always thought that was, you know, spot on. You show them Bermondsey Towels, and because they think it's going to be a certain film, they don't review it as the film that it is. They go, well, that's not it's not Neil by Mouth or it's not it's not Rise of the Foot Soldier. And you're like, no, they're great films, but that's not what i'm trying to make it and then they then tell you why it's wrong because it's not that um so yeah it'd be great to have Ridiculous. your dad to sort of say this is what we, this is what we're making this is why we're making it um and and this is what we hopefully are going to achieve and then if we do it you let us know and if we don't you tell us where we can go better well we're friends on instagram so let's keep in touch and let's make that yeah. happen mate you're one of Love my that. 10 followers <laughs> 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 which i think even my wife's unfollowed me because she's fed up about me plugging bermsey towels and the gangsters kiss so <laughs> keep plugging keep plugging keep shilling keep plugging it's the way we do it man like listen i'm gonna be putting a thumbnail up of both of us on my instagram feed in the next 24 hours and you know i'm hoping that your clout drives some clout it's just the way we do it it's it's you know we drive and we help and we talk it is part of the world now and it's part of the business. And yeah, it's got some negative sides, but it's also got some great sides. You know, years ago, nowadays the industry's harder and it is because yeah. you've got the streamers driving down prices, squeezing the producers. Yeah, that, that is true. But you've yeah. also got a chart. 20 years ago, people like me weren't making films. We weren't. Mm -hmm. Where now yeah. we've got a chance to not only make a film, but to get the word out there. I mean, I, I think. When I looked at your reviews, it's been seen by over a thousand people. And that means that yep. over a thousand people have seen your opinion of my work. That's brilliant. Um, Nearly two and, and a half thousand now, mate. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. I think it, you've got to embrace that. And, um, mm. and, and, and and again, this comes back from my granddad being an alternative businessman. You've got to, when you meet good people, you've got to nurture that and, 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 and embrace that and be grateful for it. And then hopefully we all, we all move along together, whether that's, you coming down on set or an actor that I've worked with before comes and works with me again or wh whatever that may be, investors that have invested in previous projects of mine are investing again. You, you've, yeah. got, you've, got to, you've got to all move together as a family in the community. Otherwise, it's just life's too hard. Uh, how refreshing to hear that. How I wish everyone thought like that. 
Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you tonight. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, plug away. Where can people find you online if they want to follow you? Oh, uh, 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 I am Michael Head, I think, or something. Michael Head of Fish. I, I don't know. I, no, I am Michael Head. I've got another one. My, my other account's been hacked, which I've had nightmares with. So don't follow that one. It ain't me. Um, but, yeah, I'm on Instagram, which I'm useless at. Um, yeah, it's. I, I, I don't, we haven't even got a website at the minute. But we are – the company that me and Frank are set up is called SE1 Films, and we're, we're doing a few projects, and we just want to promote young talent whether that is an actor, a writer, a director, a first AD, even Bermondsey Towers was done with, in association with Middlesex University because nice. there's no pipeline for people. Um, and it, it's just that you've got to, we've got to, if you don't create chances for new talent, nothing ever happens, you know, and, and that's what I was. I, for years I was writing scripts and being told, oh, I was being ignored. Where now I'm at a position where people are listening you've got to create them opportunities as well. So yeah, SE one films is the company and yeah, I think I'm on Instagram. I think I'm on Twitter. I looked at it about five years ago. you basically, all you'll see from me is the odd Leeds United post, sadly, and, and maybe a picture <laughs> of my kids. <laughs> Love that. Michael, as I said, it's been a pleasure. You and me are going to stay in touch and I can't look forward to what you do next. So listen, I'm sure I speak for the, the small audience that I have. I'm sure they're all looking forward to seeing what you're doing next too. It's been lovely, mate. Thank you so much. No, cheers, mate. I really and, and to everyone that's that's watched the film and supported it, it makes a it makes such a huge difference. So thank you. And it genuinely does. Thank you ever so much. It really does mean the world. Have a good evening. Well,